So when you, tell me a bit about your decision to produce cats. I mean, how did that come about? Did you decide or did someone give you a call or how did that work? Because you weren't really a producer. You were learning at the time, right? You'd never well, done I'd the done, big one. Yeah, no, I'd never done a big one, but I'd done a lot of little ones. And I'd had a lot of those really terrific kids from Godspell and others too. Um, do I did most of the shows at the Dell and, and Teller's Cage we did. Um, uh, well, actually, it had been not a great week in theater, and Gina Mallet and I used to hang out a bit together. And uh, Gina Mallet was the critic for the Star. The right? Star, yes. And um, no, it was a particularly bad week. The shows were not good, and I'm pretty average Joe too. As much as I've seen, I either come out of a show, you know, thinking there's credit to it or not. Uh, anyway, she phoned and said, you know what, this has been a terrible week. I said, yes, that's true. She said, why don't you just go get cats? I said, yes, and do what with it? She said, go to the Elgin. I said, the Elgin's been closed for 40 years or whatever it was. She said, no, no, you can speak to the government. And, and anyway, she talked me into it. So. I thought, okay, I'll give that a try. And I thought, this will be a waste of time. Everybody said, don't even bother to talk to it. It's the Ontario Heritage Foundation. Luckily for me. And at me, this point, the Elgin was shut down, right? Yes. Elgin, Winter Garden, had been closed shut. for when, the 50s? Well, well, yeah, no, since oh, the 40s? Before that, yeah. No, it, uh, it was in pretty bad shape, too. I mean, there was nothing in there. And why did the government own it? Uh, it's the Ontario Heritage. It was. It's the only. It, to this day, right now, uh, it's the only double-decker theater functioning in the world. And do you know why we didn't tear it down? I mean, if it was dark for forty years and was sitting in, you know, primary real estate uh, in downtown Toronto, why was it never ripped down? I guess because they just. I I have never asked them that. I. It was just sitting there and black inside, dark inside. Um, and I thought, well, this will be a waste of time. I, but luckily, Susan Fish was the culture minister who had actually seen cats in New York. I was in, in that office two minutes, and she said, sure, okay. So I have her to thank for a lot of it. I thought, gee, all those people that said, don't do this, this is crazy, how bad can it be? I, of course, had not seen cats. I had no idea. So I went to New York and I thought, okay, I can do that. Then it ran, and we ran into the problem that a show had never been licensed while it was running on Broadway, not in Toronto, Canada, certainly. Um, so we got over that hump. And in, in, for licensing for all those students who are listening, shows that are in the States, they license their tours or their franchise productions and they can get quite possessive about who gets what, where, when. Very, Because very. don't they want to protect their tours? They do, but they had never, and Cats was the first tour to do Canada. They, Canada is a tough country to tour because of the theaters, they're too far apart. You know, it's kind of a breeze in the States, but, uh, we didn't even think about that effort. We just wanted to get it opened at the Elgin. So we did. We had quite a few meetings with the Schubert organization, who were terrific guys, very nice. And I thought, well, if they're thinking it'll work, it'll work. They did insist on some points that we had to adhere to. We had to have the original creative team. But what we did was put, I said, we are not going to pay for these people forever. I mean, so we matched every single person working on the show from out of town with a Canadian. And I might add, turned out sometimes a little bit better than the original ones, which was very interesting to watch, too. Um, so the m night we opened, the next day, we said goodbye to everybody, and the Canadians took over. Now, sitting doing those negotiations in New York, you had worked on group ticket sales, <laughs> and then you'd done <laughs> small productions at the Dell and Teller's mm -hmm. Cage, and there's Marlene in New York talking to the big guys, the big producers. The, very, the big producers who always had, which always, 
I, my partner Ernie Rubenstein and, and Tina Vander Hayden were involved too and the uh, it, 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 you go into this very nice office but always sitting um, with them is this very nice lawyer without a pen or a pencil or anything I don't know if she's got a recorder in her pocket or what but she is listening to every single word I, it's like going before a panel for a, an audition you know will they make it or won't they make it but they know that they were nice and they saw the prospect too Canada's a big country um, but how did you know what kind of terms to agree to and what would be too rich and which would drive you into the gutter or I mean how do you know that if you've only worked at the Dell and uh, Again, it's calm. I, I worked at the. I've set up a few things in my before I got into showbiz. Um, at the Western Hospital, I set up their Department of Physical Medicine. I would set up their foundation. Um, I've actually. I was actually going to be a phys ed teacher, which I thought was a great idea because I was playing basketball for the city and I swam, professionally synchronized swimming. And anything I could do, teaching, uh, but anyway, as I graduated from high school, I realized I would never, ever get through the uh, stuff that I needed to get into. It's, you know, chemistry, and I was just hopeless. So um, I thought, oh, I'll just go out and work for a year and see what I end up with. <laughs> so when you're working on the deal, there's Ernie and yourself, right? It's Ernie, mm -hmm. and there you are in the office in New York working with the, the Schuberts. Mm -hmm. So do you and Ernie then walk away and say, okay, uh, let's run this deal by two or three people outside to make sure it's good, or do you just go, yep, makes sense to me, let's sign it? How does that work? No, I didn't uh, do all that at that, that moment, but what I did get was a very interesting call from Alan Slate, whom I knew, and uh, oh, Slate Broadcasting. Yes, and he said, "Do you want some help with this?" I said, "Absolutely." <laughs> so he and I went to lunch. It's all in his book that he just wrote. It was very funny. Anyway, um, he was fabulous. He really helped me a lot because uh, you see, a lot of the people had seen cats in in. The, New York was worried that it would take away from their business. That's why they never licensed shows to come to Toronto because Toronto was, you know, getting back in the swing of things. It, it that was never going to make a difference ever. Um, but Alan and, and a bunch of them had seen it and knew it was a good deal, and they're very happy to this day that they did. I mean, it was terrific. Then when we decided we could handle it. Um, I guess we ran, the, the Heritage Foundation decided, gee, maybe there is hope for this theater. So they basically had to get us out of there so that they could refurbish it. So let's be clear, the, the Elgin, the Double Decker Theater, the Elgin's at the bottom, Winter Garden's on top of it. Yes. The Winter Garden was the one that really had been dark since 1929, I yeah. think. Yeah. But the Elgin actually had been operating as a movie theater? Yes, they so did some movies. So it may have been dark for 40 years, but at least it was more, mm -hmm. I mean, there wasn't seats all over the place and plaster no, no. falling No, no, although the Bernie Jacobs from the Schubert organization, it was he and Phil Smith, really, that we dealt with mostly, uh, he came to see it. They actually wanted to see where this first miracle was going to happen uh, and said, seats are too big, take them out. <laughs> Make them smaller, and I'm thinking uh, over my dead body. Things, <laughs> so we never touched them, of course. But uh, it, they they took great care in making sure things went well. I mean, they were it was very close to them too to make it successful. But when they decided to redo the theaters, we had to get out, and everybody wanted us to tour. So this is after Cats is closed now? Well, we closed it to tour because we had to get out so they could start hammer on their $30 million escapade that they were doing, which I'm thrilled that they did because it's a, well, both of them are beautiful theaters. Um, so when we, because we had not built the set as a tour, and 
the crew was fabulous. They figured out how they could do it by doing this, that, and the other thing. And because touring in Canada with a set like that it, that has to go by transport it takes three days. You know, the actors can, can get there in five hours. So it took a lot of doing. And the guy who ran the Vancouver Playhouse, uh, Queen Elizabeth Theatre in Vancouver at that time, actually called me and said, do you want me to set up a, a conference call with all the theaters across Canada? He said, I know them all well. I've worked in them. I mean, everybody was so willing to, to give it a hand. And, and we had the funniest conference call you've ever heard. So, so when you decided to tour, did you set up the network of theaters? Or yes. You, so you started calling theaters across the country? No, well, that's what he, John Dyke did. Um, he was terrific. He said, I'll set it up for next week. I'll get them all on the phone. And then you, you really realize what a chore it is to do a tour in Canada. You know, Regina didn't want to take it because they were seeding at that point, you know, and uh, somebody else was haying and somebody, and we couldn't go past uh, Montreal because the theaters weren't big enough. But I mean, we spent, I think, six months in Vancouver and then just everybody really benefited from it. It was a delightful thing to do. Kids in the show loved it. Most of them stayed with the show. Um, we didn't have a, a, you know, except for injuries, of course, because Cats is such a dance show. So how many cities did you play? Outside I, of Toronto, I don't even remember. The, all Winnipeg, Regina, Edmonton, Vancouver, Calgary, Montreal. I remember getting very cross with the union there because <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the ushers wouldn't hand out the programs. It wasn't their job. So I started handing out programs. And did you predetermine the the time you played in each city? You yes. say we're going to have six weeks in Vancouver and two weeks in yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But that we, was preset. And how yeah. did so? How does a producer make that call? I think I can play for six weeks in Vancouver. I think I can play for two weeks. In when you're moving like that, you you there is no changing your mind. Right. If you're selling out, you might get to go back to it, but you can't change because there's too much scheduling to go on. And how do you decide that it's, you think you're going to book six weeks in Vancouver? That was not a tough thing to do with cats because cats had never been out west. Uh, we caused quite a pleasant chaos in Vancouver because they just didn't get a lot of shows for one thing. Um, However, I have to say a funny story, though. The guy that set up the, the call, the conference call, about six months later said, I'm going out to get some cigarettes and never came back. So nobody knows what happened to him. But he certainly helped me a lot, I'll tell you. I um, mean, he left the country or he uh, left nobody, the He just decided he wasn't going back to work, apparently. Wow. It's a wonderful guy, but he'd been in the business for a while, and uh, I'm sure he deserved it, but it and, was just so funny. And tell me a bit about the deal, then, you have with each theater. I mean, you split the box office, so you split the cost. I mean, how do you and, say, the Queen Elizabeth Playhouse or whatever is in Vancouver, how do you choose what kind of deal to make? And then you go to Edmonton, it's a different deal. How do you do that? Well, we... That's an easy one to choose because, again, it was cats. Usually you can, you either go in on a guarantee, which means you get paid your, low, your basic costs, and then split the box office. There are two or three ways to do it.